<laughs> Mr. Ed here. Today is October 16th, 2020. I'm in Big Branch, Louisiana. That's right between Lacombe and Mandeville, right on Cane Bayou. In fact, the address of the house is on Cane Bayou. It's just a little bayou that runs from just a, it's almost like a drainage canal from the land and it runs out into Lake Pontchartrain. And today, yeah, we've got bees right here in this house. The bees are, are entering at this spot right, right down here. It's 53, 54 degrees right now. It's chilly this morning, at least for me it's chilly. And the bees really aren't flying real good. When I came here the other day, boy, they were just like, they were, they were really active um, a week ago when I came out here. But today, since it's so chilly, they're not really flying all that much. It's like, in, you can see it's an elevated house. Uh, and the grade on the house is really severe. Back in the back end, it might be at eight feet, and right here, it's only about two foot. So we have to get underneath the house, and you'll see it's a real comfortable little space under there. Yeah, cozy and comfortable, and it's got dirt on the bottom. So I'll be on my back or sitting on my rear end, or I don't know exactly how we can do this, but we'll get it done. Bees are in between the floor joists, two by uh, twelve floor joists. Uh, there's aluminum board under there, so that'll have to be removed and insulation as well so that'll be that'll all be cut down and you know we'll expose the hot good time Charlie just pulled up a guy he said he, he said he needed his his beauty rest so he's, he's here a little bit late no right. I had to climb a pine tree I had to climb a pine tree you to gotta get that see go. where I was <laughs> so he's standing right here in front of these the, the pathway so he's gonna get stung right here <laughs> look they're right here so and he wants me to crawl under this house Can yeah you we, believe gotta, it? We, we don't have to crawl under. we're gonna access it through the back side by the grace of God we'll get these bees out of here they're coming up to the Abbey with me and hopefully within, Charlie always says two hours we'll get this thing done, but I think this will be a little bit longer and I think it is going to be a big one. I'll show you when we get under there, the, uh, the FLIR. I shot the FLIR the other day and it, it's a really weak, it's weak signal, but because of that aluminum board and that insulation in there, I couldn't get a real good signal to judge on the size of it. But I'll, I'll, we'll get under there and show you and show you the whole space. Like I said, by the grace of God, we'll get these bees out of here up to the Abbey and another wrangling adventure for the books. Let's wrangle, Charlie. <laughs> Let's do it. Charlie, Charlie and I are underneath the house. And like I told you, this is like a comfy space under here. The, um, I've got the little tarp set up so I won't be laying on the ground. The BVAC is set up over there. And right here, and there's no point in me showing you with the flare, but right there, that's where our bees are. And I'm going to grab the camera and go over there and show you. And my plan is I'm going to remove this whole 4x8 section of aluminum board and because I think that that hive jumps the, uh, the joy space so Charlie thinks he's brave enough yeah so he's pointing out right now that's where our bees are that's the um, the comb has actually extended be beyond that aluminum board that's why that stuff is hanging down but let me get the camera over there and I'll show you what that's all about let's take a look and see what we're looking like right here. All this is going to come down anyway. And I just want to show you where the bees were up here. And I, like I said, we're going to go ahead and take down this whole 4x8 little sheet of this stuff and then reveal that whole hive. And I, I kind of think, looking at this comb, it doesn't look like it's that old. The homeowner said they've been here for a year, and I, I would think that that's pretty accurate. Now there have been hives previously, not in this location, but at the other end, down there where that opening is, as well as way, way down there, there's hive, there was a hive down there, and another one on the outside. So this place is just loaded with bees, and I can almost be assured I will be back here in the springtime catching swarms from this place because there's, there's it's right there next to the bayou and it's just loaded with food and, and obviously uh, feral bees let's go ahead and take down this aluminum board and see what this hive looks like huh
Now that's the way <laughs> you like to see the covering of the hive removed. Looks like this is, uh, I don't know, I would guess that's rats that brought this stuff in. Let's go ahead and pull this stuff down so we can see our hive. Oh, nice. Perfect. So it's, that is a healthy looking hive. Very healthy looking hive. And it only goes to right here. So I'm going to get busy with that vacuum cleaner and start, I think I'm going to just go ahead and start on this end, vacuuming the bees off of this comb, putting the comb in our ice chest and working our way up to the, the cluster of the bees right there. And you, you, by now you all know as you're looking at this, at this end we're going to find honey stores at this end. And as we get closer to where the brood would be, there'll be less honey and more brood. But here we are in the middle of October, and our queen, she is definitely, she's starting to stop laying. <laughs> That's funny, she's starting to stop. But we're, we're still in our nectar flow, probably about halfway through the, the, our goldenrod. So we probably have about two more weeks. So she'll continue laying until that time. But it's going to be at a decreased amount because the amount of food that's coming in is not as much as it was been. And so that's how she determines, what determines her laying, the amount she lays is by the amount of food that they bring in. So we have a, a good number of bees in here. Uh, I, I can't really tell you how many right now, but these are two by 12 joists. So you know that comb is gonna be a good 10 inches deep and a full, 14, 15 inches wide. So that, that'll be almost frameable frames of comb. And being if we don't have high beetles in here, we're gonna be able to use a lot of that. All right, I'm gonna give the camera back to Charlie. I got dust in my eyes now. And let him <laughs> start videoing. <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> Oh man, I am slap wore out already. Man, the angle under here is absolutely the pits. But gosh, these slabs of comb, these full of honey that are coming off here, they, they weigh, easily they weigh eight to 10 pounds. I mean, these just full of honey. And look at this, I mean, this, this box is already full of them. And it's, this is all usable honey. I can frame this honey up. It's gonna be gorgeous, this stuff. I'm still uh, at least three, if not four more frames of honey, sections of honey, before I get down to where the brood will be. And uh, hopefully as I, I work further down, I'll be able, my angle will, will become uh, easier for me to work. Cause right now it's just a, oh my gosh, it, the strain on my stomach and my legs, my back, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, don't, don't think this is a real glamorous job here. Honey's dripping all over me. I got my eyes are burning. It's a, it, 
it's another adventure though. We're gonna go ahead and start that vacuum back up again. Start cutting out some more cone. Charlie, what do you think so far? I think it's rough. He's <laughs> making me tired. <laughs> I'm the one that's getting tired. All right, we're gonna get back to it. <laughs> I think that we're just about out of all the honeycomb. I mean, you still, you can see right around this part right here where the honey is still in there and how when the queen was laying, she laid all in this area right in here. So we still have a little bit of brood, still unhatched brood right there. And I'm not really expecting to find a lot in here, but we'll get some of it. And well, we got about five more pieces of comb in there that it looked like. And I'll vacuum and <laughs> you know me and Charlie are going to be looking for that queen even though it's kind of dark down here. Alright, let's see if we can find a queen in all this mess.
So when I take this down, Charles, you're going to look on the back side of this because I'm looking on the on the comb that's still in the wall. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. Thank you, Jesus. So Charlie's job was to look on the comb that I pulled off the wall. He's supposed to look at that. And then I look at, at the comb that's remaining on the wall. And uh, I saw her crawling on that piece of comb. I just reached up and grabbed her. And you know, we had a little struggle getting the clip out, but we got it out and now she's in it. So we're going to go a little bit quicker now, but we're almost finished anyway. So thank you, Jesus. Ooh, this is a great deal right here. As I'm vacuuming the rest of the bees up and I noticed you'll notice too <laughs> that the cone is so irregular shaped so this what this is is uh, where an old hive had been and then these bees when they moved in they just start to rebuild on it and the real reason giveaway of how there was an old hive in here is right there you can see the wax moth cocoons so that hive had died out and then this one moved in and started taking over and added on and just kept on building it up. Pretty interesting. <laughs> Thankfully, folks, that thing ain't there no more. Now, all these bees you see around here, yep, robber bees. I got as many of the, the hive bees as I could, anything in clusters around it, but the robber bees, even underneath this house, they have done moved in. So we're picking up our stuff and, um, I'll go ahead and show you what we got on the outside because I'm ready to get out of here. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> that was like a miserable job. You know, Charlie, again, Charlie keeps saying, Jeff, we're only going to be here for two hours. Man, we've been here for now five hours now. Five hours. And I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Now, I still got to go up to the Abbey and cut this comb, frame it up, turn the bees loose. It's about 2.30 right now. We got here. I got here at 9 o'clock. So, I mean, I still got another two hours worth of work. So I'll, my day will be over probably about six o'clock. What about what time yours over? Oh, mine's gonna be over about six. <laughs> so, I'm going to bed. No, he's not. He's, he told me today he's gotta uh, he's gotta go fly a jet to Miami. So I don't know what's out. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Did you tell me you had a jet flight? Uh, it, it was canceled. Oh, shut. Yeah, Charlie's got his own private jet. You know, he just like travels all around the world. So anyway, this removal is over, thankfully. We got the bees in the van, the queen in the van, a ton of honey. You saw all that honey that we took out of there. Every time I took a piece of comb out, Charlie goes, oh my gosh. And I said, oh my gosh. So, but I don't know if I'll put that on the video. <laughs> no, no, I don't think it came out. No. <laughs> Besides that vacuum is uh, going. So right. what, are you, what are your thoughts, bud? My thoughts were, it was unbelievable. We only had three and a half feet of uh, room to work in, and uh, the exciting part was when we caught the queen. <laughs> was a Jeff one. catches the queen, gets excited, can't get his I clip. I don't get excited, huh? Drops, I drop my camera, <laughs> I'm trying to get it, he caught it with his fingers. Ultimately, we got the queen, she's safe, everything's fine. So that's about it. Thanks for watching. Keep on watching. We'll be making more. God bless. Mr. Ed. And Charlie. We're out of here. Next here. Video. Good one, Charlie. Good one. Good, good one. Very good. As you can guess, <laughs> I made it back up to the Abbey and I forgot to show you all that comb that I took out. Now you saw each piece as it was coming out of the hive, but I want to show you how much honeycomb 
we got. I mean, th this box, I, I don't, I don't want to break this comb um, showing you, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these slabs in there. This was, this was all that, that comb at the end of the hive that I just pulled out. And then in this box, these are, some of our, these two are brood comb, and then the rest of these are honeycomb as well. And then in this one, it's just our, our brood comb right here. So I'm going to start framing all this stuff up and getting it into our box. I've got my comb all framed up now. I wound up putting four frames of brood and pollen and six frames of honey in here. And you can see how nice this comb, the size of this comb, how it frames up. Really, really nice. Definitely, when you get those slabs of comb on on 2x12 structure, there's a brood one right there, that you can really frame these things up beautifully. Not chopped up. One section fills a whole frame and it fills it really, really nicely too. So, six frames of honey. That one's got pollen on it. And four frames of brood, or brood cone with some brood on it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and set the box up outside and we're gonna turn our bees loose. Finally, our <laughs> moment has arrived to turn our bees loose. And what I've done is I place a, a medium super on top of my deep super that's got all the comb in it. And that's just a spacer, a, a spacer box, that's all it is. It gives me, allows me to, to bounce my bees in here, they'll fall down. It's just, it's just easier and the, really the other nice thing is I take my queen and I just lay her, I just lay her on the top of these frames right here. Now she's going to stay in this cage for two days. I won't turn her loose until Monday. Um, they need to stay in here. I want them to stay in here. And so by keeping that queen caged up, it really does, it doesn't guarantee that the bees will stay. But with the queen there, the brood in the box and that honey in the box, there is a, a, a you know, that's, that's the best likelihood of, of our bees staying in the box. I know I talked to somebody up in Pennsylvania, a brand new uh, bee wrangler in Pennsylvania, and she had taken out some bees from underneath the trailer. She vacuumed them up and brought them home, went out there the next day and they were gone. And, you know, there's, there's just no telling. There's so many reasons why it happens. But <clears throat> by doing it the way I'm doing right here, this is the, the, the best way that I, I know of keeping uh, my bees in the box. So the bees have really clustered on the top of this screen right here because I had that queen up here. So I'm going to lift the screen up and then I'll just bounce it in here. Yeah, I, this system of, of taking the bees and putting them in the box physically instead of putting the brood box on top of them and letting them walk up, I like it so much better because what's been happening is that that honey will drip down on the bees and it'll kill a lot of them. It's a mess. I find this way is so much easier. The bees survive it better and I like it a lot easier. Plus I like seeing all the bees fly in there. So we're going to take our screen off and you'll see there'll probably be a nice bob of bees on this and we'll just bounce them. That about does it. These bees will find that entrance and they'll get in there and then I'll come back on Monday and turn loose our queen. Woo! Good day, good day. <laughs>